according to the Winging Makers, there are people who are incarnated now who would be the equivalent of outliers. Are you familiar with this term? No. The term is typically used in statistics. Think of it like an anomaly. A person has what is called a transient malfunction to their interface, but in this malfunction, they are able to see through the crack. It might only last a second or two, but they glimpse what is behind the walls. And again, I'm not talking about the astral plane, that's just a more rarefied plane of the hologram of deception. People with these transient malfunctions often end up being diagnosed autistic, or in extreme cases, are considered schizophrenic, but because the malfunction is transient, they slowly merge back into the human hologram and lack the contextual meaning of what they saw anyway. They learn to forget. The program draws them back in. But before they forget, before they return to normal beliefs, before they are drugged or quarantined, they share their experience to the unconscious mind. And this begins to express itself through culture. It'll come out in movies, books, theater, art, poetry, and many of these expressions will help to feed the unconscious mind and open it up to the possibility that the scale of our prison encompasses even the light, even science, even angels, even God. Do we wear a target on ourselves when this gets released? I mean will Anu decide to take us down if this goes out? Believe me, I've probed on that issue. There's risk involved. How much, I don't know. The wing makers explain that the creators of this plan have resigned themselves to the intervention, but that their equivalents here on Earth are not as excited by those prospects. It'll work its way out, but it'll take some time. What happens between now, and the Grand Portal, when the wall gets pushed down? All I can tell you is that the triad of power will continue to consolidate. The money system will continue to spiral away from the many into the hands of the few. This was part of the original programming. Relating to the return of Anu? Yes. Anu would step in and solve the world's problems and be anointed. Anu would use the centralization of the money system to integrate technology into biologic systems, so they would be able to have infinite existence in Bubble One, Earth. That way, Anu reasoned, he could be God in this world forever. But as I said, this plan was not perfect in the sense of its infinitude, Anu underestimated the beings in Bubble 3 and beyond. Has it ever been tried before? What? This crack in the wall, and then pushing the wall down? No. Not in our world. This is the first coordinated effort to liberate humanity. But what about Jesus or Buddha? According to the Wing Makers, each of the avatars who came to this planet did so as invited guests. An avatar is an incarnate teacher of truth. Humans were explained as lost beings. It's literally how we are defined in the planes of existence outside our planet. Remember what I had said about the higher dimensional beings that would visit Earth and become manifested? Yes. That was how many of these avatars came to Earth. They did not go through the birth process, they literally manifested in the Earth plane with their dimensional consciousness intact. They did not want to be born into this world and inhabit a human body, because they knew they would sleep and forget. Avatars had to directly manifest. The problem was that people were afraid of them and stayed away, or people acted as guardians of the old system and wanted to destroy the avatar, or some people looked to the avatar to save them. This was what spawned the evolution saviorship model of the universe. Evolution, as defined here, is the process of being saved and absolved of one's sins. The sinner evolved into the disciple, and the disciple evolved into the teacher, and the teacher evolved into the hierarchy of teachers and leaders. Saviorship simply meant that an outside force or avatar would save the individual from their sins or reprehensible behavior, and connect them to the light or spirit of God. The Savior was an intermediary of the hierarchy that plugged the individual into the light of illumination and enlightenment. So, didn't these avatars open a crack? Of sorts, but mostly it was to demonstrate what was really inside the human vessel. It was not to show miracles for the sake of convincing people to follow them or to create a religion. The resurrection, for example, was not a piece of theater to underline Jesus' unique stature as the Son of God. He was not that. That was written in later. As his popularity grew, it was understood that Anu and Marduk could utilize Jesus to strengthen Anu's hold on human culture, and reposition himself as a loving God, the father of great entities like Jesus. Avatars were generally considered an annoyance by Anu. Usually they were killed or locked up to wither and die. Stories would be created to either cement them to Anu's glorification, or they would be vilified and deemed to be of Satan. 
there was no middle ground with avatars. Jesus was really the first avatar that Anu decided to embrace and create a world religion around. Each of the other world religions were modeled after Christianity, even those whose founder was not technically an avatar. Avatars were very rare. They wanted to come in and push down the walls, but they needed a large enough following to bring the whole wall down. A crack wouldn't be enough. And if they came simply to show the nature of the infinite being inside each human uniform, they risked a religion being built around them that would become, over time, welded to Anu and the holographic, multi-layer deception that hung over humanity like a dome. The wing makers refer to a new type of being called a sovereign entity. These are pre-sovereign integral beings, but they are seated with the capacity to step out of the hierarchy, and in doing so, they allow themselves to examine information that others would attack or ignore. Unfortunately, the information that will liberate people is the very information they are programmed to attack. When you use the term hierarchy, what are you referring to exactly? The wing makers seem to use this interchangeably with Anu at the top, his leadership within the dimensions, or bubble 2, and his leadership on Earth in the form of the triad of power. Collectively, this is the hierarchy. Can you help me understand how it is that no one knows about this? I mean, out of six billion people that walk the Earth now, and I don't know how many over the whole history of mankind, but it must be, I don't know, about a hundred billion or so, how could it be disguised? That's how many life expressions, perhaps, but not beings. Because of reincarnation, right? Yes. But to answer your question, it's done through the interface of the human vessel. The interface is what most people consider to be them. That is their consciousness. The interface fuses with the physical body and the dimensional being that powers and animates it. There's an old saying that the last thing a fish notices is water. It's an apt expression of our circumstance, too. Humans have been living in this consciousness of a human body ever since they were first created. It is all they have ever known, and because of the sophistication of the technology that underlies this entire deception, we are thrown distraction after distraction to never ever consider the possibility that everything is a part of an illusion, everything. While it seems impossible that a hundred billion lives have existed and not one has peered through the crack, it would be like going to the deep sea where the bioluminescent fish live, and explaining to them that a world exists of light and warmth. Maybe one or two would venture from the depths if they were told of this world, and they would return and report that they had experienced this strange, mysterious world. But never would they imagine that a whole world of land and air existed above that, where beings of entirely different natures walked on dry dirt and breathed air and looked at stars a billion light years away. Humans are a lot like those bioluminescent fish. Okay, I understand the analogy, but no one... Momentary glimpses through cracks, that's all. The avatars that manifested here have operated the closest to our true nature on this planet, but those who have gone through the birth process and have human DNA, they are locked into their interface or they are quickly removed. Tuesday you talked at length about Lucifer and his creation of the Animus. Where is that factor into this, this story? Until last night I didn't know if this interview would even take place. I knew you wanted to speak in depth about the Grand Portal, but I wasn't sure at what level I would be allowed to disclose it. This is very guarded information. It's both a break-in and a break-out. The break-in is difficult to engineer amid the misinformation and deception that occurs on this planet relative to humans. Lucifer and the fallen angels was a nod to the fallen humans who were booted out of Eden. It is the same story with the same purpose, place fear of rebellion in the consciousness systems of humans. Make it strong and potent in the unconscious mind, and make sure that Lucifer, Satan and the devil mirror the trinity of good, the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Anu realized that the best way to make his human creation lean his way was to make the path to his kingdom appear virtuous and morally acceptable. And how do you do that? You have evil embodied in demons that are bent on enslaving humans and preventing them from following the virtuous path. It created the perfect polarity of human beings progressing to the kingdom of God, while demons seduced and ensnared them. Angels and ascended masters were guides to show the way to the waiting kingdom. Eastern traditions used demigods, hierarchies of masters, meditation, but it was based on the very same polarity, which at its most basic level was light is good, and darkness is evil. So with that said, let me return to your question about Lucifer and the Animus. The story of Lucifer is like a prop on a stage. With Lucifer in play, the stage is more dangerous. You can place blame. 
You can deflect blame and responsibility from the morally righteous and God-fearing humans. You can infer that your enemies are enslaved by demons that do the bidding of Lucifer or Satan. This creates conflicts that lead to wars. This creates histories of conflict which sow generation after generation of people who are living their forefathers' conflict. Amid all of this, God grows in stature and importance. Everyone wants to claim that God is on their side. Lucifer was a catalyst to enlarge the importance of Anu. To make humans dependent on him even though they never saw him, heard him, tasted him, smelled him or touched him. He was in the universal field, vis-a-vis, -vis, the unconscious mind. It was programmed this way, and religious culture only made it feel more real. The animus were the human 3.0, in the trajectory envisioned by Anu, to support his infinite supremacy over humanity. His goal was to synthesize humanity with technology. The animus were us in a potential future. There are government organizations, corporate entities and research institutions that share this same goal even as we speak. How did the decision get made not to release everything? I've said that the Wingmaker's materials are extensive. There are 24 philosophical papers, but only four will be released. The four interviews we previously done, as I told you, these four will be released, possibly not all at once, but those have been sanctioned. This interview and the remaining 20 philosophy papers will not be released until certain conditions are met. What those conditions are, I don't know. I assume it has to do with the discovery of the portal, the human portal I mentioned, and getting the crack in the wall established in this world. Once a foothold is made in establishing the inception point, perhaps then the other materials can be released. As for how the decision is made, let me be very clear that this is not my decision. It is determined by the wing makers. An intervention from time travelers is a very sensitive operation. Many variables need to be weighed and considered. Forgive my blunt question here, but how do you know that the wingmakers aren't part of this whole deception? At some point you have to trust your feelings and intuition, otherwise everything is just a purposeless mental exercise. I can say that I'm 100% confident. As a scientist, I'm disbelieving by nature, but everything I've read and studied is consistent to their stated goal, which is to establish a new inception point for human beings in this specific time. Their first disclosure is a cloaked message of hope. An energetic rewiring of the spiritual philosophies of this planet, away from masters, organizations, hierarchies and belief. It is more focused on becoming a spiritual activist or practitioner of behavioral intelligence. It is about activating pre-sovereign integrals who are able to understand the evolutionary scope of the human being and help it to veer in the direction of the sovereign integral. The next or second disclosure will be the activation of the human portal. I don't know yet how this will unfold, only that it will happen relatively soon. The third disclosure will be this interview, and possibly other material. When this interview is released, it signals that the inception point has already been made. According to the wing makers, this means that the grand portal will occur on this planet. Once the new inception point is anchored, it will unfold to plan. I have made the decision that if the second disclosure occurs, I will commit to this plan 100%. Until then, I have told the wing makers that I am with them, and will conduct my actions according to their insights and guidance, but I will always have doubt in my mind until I see that the second disclosure occurs. What if no one believes this, Dr. Neruda? What if you release this interview sometime in the future, and no one can relate to it or, as you suggested, they attack it? What then? Is the human portal sufficient to make this whole thing happen? Yes. That's what I've been told. Once the inception point is anchored, it will all unfold to plan. So no one needs to believe this, it'll just happen? That doesn't sound right. This information will remain in the underground, but science, according to the wing makers, will be the force to actually prove out this information. How? Science will find the walls. They won't expose the crack or necessarily assist in the demolition, but they will expose the walls. But you said that LERM was discovered by the ACIO, and they thought of it as God or Universal Intelligence or whatever it was. Yes. I'm not saying that science will define the hologram of deception as an insidious ruse perpetrated on humanity to enslave infinite beings to operate as finite, fear-based diminishments of themselves. That's not my point. 